Did you enjoy Dennis last week? Well, he's willing to come back next week, so. <laughs> um, Dennis is a good friend, and, um, and in fact, uh, he actually called and said, Bill, do you need a break? You know, I'd be glad to give you one. In fact, uh, and so that, that's a pretty special friend. I said, you know, I don't know, Dennis, we don't have a lot of money. He says, I'm not doing this for money, Bill. Just, we'll just be glad to just do it. In fact, so we went ahead and gave him a check, and after he, he writes me on uh, Sunday afternoon, why'd you do that? You weren't supposed to give me anything. You know, that, that's just, just a friend who said I wanted to come, and, that, and he also, you know, he said that message was something that God had been working on in him, and so I hope that you enjoyed what God wanted to say to you through, through my friend. Um, Dennis is a part of a pastor mentor group that I've been in now for I think it's about nine years. Uh, Jim Walden, Weldon, who is the pastor at Temple City First Baptist Church, is also in that that mentor group. And so um, Jim is the pastor I was mentioning earlier, who's um, worship leader, 44 years old. I don't know the details. I just know that Jim really has a tough job this morning. as he tries to comfort a congregation, family, and deal with the, his own loss um, of a worship leader that's been at this church since he was 24 years old as the worship leader. And this week, he was 44 when he died this week. We're continuing our series on um, Witnesses of the Resurrection. And, and this is a rather interesting one. As I was looking through the scriptures, you know, we, we already talked about Paul, and Paul said that he was uh, one who saw Jesus as one abnormally born. He, he saw Jesus risen from the dead where? On the road to Damascus. Uh, but 1 Corinthians says that, he, that when that happened, Paul is actually listing the various witnessing experiences, the times that people have saw Jesus risen from the dead. And in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 7, it actually says that <clears throat> then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last he appeared to me as one abnormally born, 1 Corinthians 15. The, interesting. There's this one little quick thing there. It's, it's kind of all, the only thing we know about it is found there in 1 Corinthians 15. He appeared to James. Who was James? James is the brother of Jesus. That's what we believe. Now, I should warn you that there's probably five or six different James listed in the scriptures in the New Testament, but we believe with pretty strong evidence that James is actually the brother. Oh, I should warn you, there are some people who say, and no, notice how sometimes how what you believe about the Bible can prejudice what the Bible says to you. If you believe that Mary was a virgin her entire life, therefore Mary couldn't have any children, right? Because she only had Jesus. And, on, and there's a part of the Christian church that believes that Mary is so special that she never, that she was a virgin, okay, her entire life. Therefore, when Scripture, and we're going to look at a couple of these verses, when Scripture says that Jesus had brothers, well, then in order to deal with that, the way they, do, they deal with that is say, oh, no, they were his cousins. They weren't really his brothers or sisters. They were his cousins. They were just being referred to as brothers or sisters. Okay. It's interesting. Just watch out. I'm just going to warn you. Every one of us has some prejudices we take to the Bible too. And sometimes we have blinders on our eyes and we will actually take the scripture and twist it from something that it says very clearly and try to make it say something different in order to fit, quote, our theology. Who is this James, the brother of Jesus? I, I call this today from Christ doubter to Christian martyr. And there's several different little passages that we're going to be looking at this morning. One I already read, already read to you from James 2, verses 14 to 26. James and his brothers did not believe in Jesus. Now notice, when they are introduced, they're actually referred to as, um, it must have been adults by this time. 
They, they didn't believe in Jesus. In fact, <clears throat> have you ever been followed a sibling who did well and you did not do so well? <laughs> had a brother or sister that had a reputation and, and you had to have a different one, so you became the rebellious one in order to get your attention? Incidentally, this week, uh, we had a wonderful time with family this week. I say wonderful. I'm sore. Debbie's sore. Um, and I'm not talking about being angry. <laughs> we uh, uh, unloaded, helped unload that whole big van of stuff and got everything into Jen and Phil and Theo and Tenley's house. Um, and, and everything almost totally unpacked. In fact, the, the, the feet to complete or however you want to say that, if you can say it in French properly. The, 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 the finest thing that really happened was we got both cars in the garage. <laughs> now that tells you you got pretty far with all the boxes, okay? <laughs> Especially since Jen kept saying throughout the week, no, don't touch that box. No, not that box here. No, we're not touching any of the garage. No, forget it. Oh, that's a cake. No, we can't do any of that. Well, we got both of those cars in that garage, Okay. Well, one of the things that we got out was um, this um, little um, activity center. Uh, they, they have some wonderful activity centers now that, that kids play on, okay? And, and the, this one has a little seat in the middle. It can spin around. You can bounce on it like a little child, okay? You can learn to walk because of that. And this one has a little truck that makes noise, an elephant that flaps its ears, a penguin get, that goes up and down. There's a rattle over here. There's a globe that spins. There's a, there's sort of, it's not really a video screen, but it sort of looks like that. It's got paper that rolls in there. It's got pictures of animals, and you can push that, and, and it makes a doo -dee 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 noise and, and, and goes to another picture and says something about that picture and, and there's all kinds of activity around this activity center. Well, it's meant for a young child, right? Okay, so Theo this week turned 21, 20 months old, right? 20 months old and Tenley turned four months old. She's holding her head up. So Tenley is at a place where it's a, the appropriate time to set her in this chair, in this activity center. And so, so we put the activity center all together, set it down at its lowest level, put Tenley in there, and guess what? Theo remembered that that was his. <laughs> and so Theo tried to climb in it with Tenley and then got upset that Tenley was in his activity center. And that little 20-month-old boy was jealous of his four-month-old sister. Now, we had some beautiful moments this week, too. I remember on Wednesday morning, I brought Tenley in to see G Theo. And he was, Debbie was there changing him. And, and he says, 20 months old, hi, Tenley. Oh, oh wow. The first time we heard, any of us heard him say her name. And then he reaches for her and he grabs her and hugs her, squeezes her, strangles her. No, he hugs her and, <laughs> and, and gives, her, gives her a kiss. You know, so he's really, and he's been doing this several times, showing love. But it was interesting to watch this jealousy of, of Theo, who was jealous of his little sister in his activity center. Father God, you know whatever crisis is taking place, they're always happening all around us, God. Somebody's in need right now. Somebody um, needs you to show them your love, your comfort, your peace. Uh, minister to the whoever's just driving that, that vehicle. And God, show, may the people involved know that you are there in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> okay, so, so I don't know what it's going to be like for Tinley to grow up with Theo uh, and, you know, the older brother, the bigger older brother, and, you know, and I'm sure there's going to be times of him protecting her, right? Yeah, and she's not going to want the protection. I mean, there, there's going to be stuff. I mean, you know, don't hold so tight, Theo. You know, you know, there's going to be those, those moments. But, but, but then you think about what it'd be like to be the brother of G or sister of Jesus Christ. Okay, forget about all the fun stuff, okay? The amazing stuff, just incredible. I'm a brother of Jesus Christ. I'm the sister of Jesus Christ, which, by the way, we are, but that's a whole other story. But, but can you imagine growing up as a sibling of Jesus Christ? He never does anything wrong. No, no, he never does anything wrong. 
this, this is not right. There's, he never does anything wrong. And the rest of us are constantly getting caught. He never does anything. Tried being the, try, okay, well, um, we're going out. We're going to have food today. Um, Jesus, would you prepare some for us? Breaks the bread and spreads it like, you know, right? He did. Isn't that, isn't that what Mary had him do? She takes him and says, you know, okay, uh, we're at this wedding. Oh, by the way, who else, who else was at the wedding? The disciples were at the wedding. There were a whole host of people at the wedding. His brothers, Jesus' brothers were at the wedding. But they don't believe in him. <clears throat> oh, that's interesting. I have a different message for you today. <laughs> Pushed a button, I guess. <laughs> It was here. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> and this is why I keep my notes up here, too. <laughs> so think about, what would it have been like to have been had Jesus as a brother. John 2 says, What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. There they stayed for a few days. The brothers were there. The disciples see this turning of water into wine, and yeah, this guy's special. The, the, the brothers is like, oh, Jesus again. Showing off in front of the crowd. Oh, Lord, help us. The disciples have a different relationship with Jesus than the brothers have. Matthew 13 says, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? That's a different Judas, okay? The third or fourth one that we've also had in the New Testament. But these are his brothers. Look. So these, these people are even probably older by this time. Mark 6 says, isn't this the carpenter? They're in Nazareth again. Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Even the community didn't believe in Jesus because they had seen him all these years, just like the brothers and sisters had. And then John 7 says, after this, Jesus went around in Galilee he did not want to go about in Judea because the Jewish leaders there were looking for a way to kill him. But when the Jewish festival of tabernacles was near, Jesus' brothers said to him, No one who wants to become a public figure acts in secret. Since you are doing these things, show yourself to the world. And now watch this. For even his own brothers did not believe in him. Jesus has been, for, been performing miracles the brothers have even seen some of that. And they're saying, look, go show yourself. You know, what are you spending all this time in Judea? Get back down to Jerusalem. Go, go to the places that really matter. Get out of here. We're tired of you. That's a whole other part of it. But look, you're doing all this stuff, and if you really are who you say you are, then go show it to the people who can really test it. Because his brothers did not believe in him. It's actually worse than that. James and his brothers thought that Jesus was crazy. Mark 3, 21 says, When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebul, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. Jesus has been casting out demons. Jesus has been doing more miracles. And what do the, does the brothers say? He's crazy. Mom, Jesus is going mad. We need to go get him. And that's why they show up. So you see, there was a time in James' life when he was simply opposed to who Jesus said he was. Thought he was crazy and didn't believe in him. In fact, once one commentator says that James and the other brothers were actually embarrassed <coughs> embarrassed by Jesus. What's interesting is that this same James, because of one encounter, will 
gather with the disciples to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit after the resurrection. He'll become the leader of the church in Jerusalem. And as Christians begin facing persecution, James leads the way with them. James gives leadership to this whole movement of Christianity right there in Jerusalem. Eventually, James will be martyred for his faith. And he challenges us in the book of James, one of the earliest books in the New Testament, he challenges us to live out our faith with action. Morrow in his book said, James doubting brother, Jesus doubting brother James was instantly changed by what? 1 Corinthians 15, 7. After the crucifixion and the resurrection, Jesus appeared to the women at the tomb. Jesus appeared to the disciples, and then the disciples. And then it says, and he appeared to his brother James. Why James? Because Jesus had responsibility for that brother to lead the church the Christian church, to lead the witness to the Jews while Paul and Barnabas and Silas and Mark would do the witness to the Gentile world. McDowell has an interesting comment about James. He says, James actually despised his brother. Did any of you experience that as a kid with your brother or sister? Actually despised his brother thought he was embarrassing the family. And then Jesus appeared to him, and in James' own word, he became the leader of the church of Jerusalem. I want you to just think about the change that takes place in James. It has to be dramatic. It's, It's similar, isn't it, to the Apostle Paul, who sees Jesus on the road to Damascus and moves from Christ hater to martyr? Well, in this case, we have a Christ doubter who moves to faith and eventually martyrdom on be with Jesus. <clears throat> Look at James 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, greetings. What, what is James saying? He has now moved from, this is my brother who I despise, who I think is crazy, who's messed up, who I really don't like, to this is my, what? Lord. All because Jesus appeared to him after the resurrection. Jude 1, or Judas Jude, a servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James to those who have been called, who are loved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. The brothers come to follow Jesus. They learn to trust him as Lord. In fact, Morrow again says, after the fact, James becomes an early leader in the church and was persecuted and eventually killed for his belief. Did you catch what Acts said? After the ascension of Jesus Christ, the, the Holy Spirit tells them they're supposed to, in fact, Jesus had said this as well, but now the Holy Spirit's guiding them. They're supposed to go back to Jerusalem, and what are they supposed to do? Wait and pray. And if you look carefully at what happens when they're waiting and praying, in fact, let's look at that, Acts 1, 12 to 14. So this is, they've been sent back, wait to become witnesses, Wait for the Holy Spirit, and they're supposed to be praying together. It says, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew. That's that's not the brother of Jesus, okay? Just clarifying. Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, that is also not the brother of Jesus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. It's a different James. So now we've had already, what, three James right there, and we still don't have the James we're talking about? They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and who else is there? And with his brothers. These are the same guys that thought he was crazy and came to get him, came to literally rescue him from himself. 
These are the same guys who thought he was messed up, who didn't believe in him. Now what are they doing? They're there with the rest of the apostles. They're there with other disciples, and they are praying with them. <clears throat> David Hume says, the fact that James was leader in Jerusalem is attested by such extra-biblical sources as the second century historian Hegesippus. In fact, James becomes the leader of the church for about 30 years in Jerusalem. Now think about this. He's the leader of the church and becomes that leader as the church starts to face intense persecution. It began with Stephen and the stoning of Stephen. Then this guy named Saul from Tarsus starts arresting Christians, throwing them in jail, having them beat, having some of them killed. Uh, he's a tyrant who just wants to get rid of everybody who follows the way. And then it gets worse than that. In fact, <clears throat> you might remember that Scripture tells us that um, Herod had actually gone and arrested James the Apostle the brother of John. Who's John, by the way? John's the beloved. John's that really close, close friend of Jesus. John is the one that when Peter says, who's going to ask him who's going to betray him? And, and John leans back into the chest of Jesus because he's the right-hand man. And he leans in there and says, who's going to betray you? And Jesus says, the one with whom I dip my bread. And he dips his bread and hands it to Judas who is behind him because that's the way they laid at the table. That James is martyred by Herod about three years to maybe four at most after Jesus ascended to heaven. Within three years, James is martyred. We no longer have him as an apostle. In fact, um, Paul will later talk about the fact that it's after... <clears throat> Well, let me read one of these passages from Galatians 1.17. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. Peter, James, and John were the three, and, and you notice, you, you've seen this, right, how the disciples are kind of d divided into th four groups of three. Peter, James, and John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, and, and they're, they're these groups of three. And Peter, James, and John, they're the three that get to go up the mountain, Mount of Transfiguration. They see Jesus. They see Mo Moses and Elijah. Peter has his run at the mouth experience, you know, all that about building tabernacles for all of them. Peter, James, and John, those three closest. And who does Herod kill? He kills James. He then, do you remember the story? Has Peter arrested. And Peter's put in jail, and what happens? The church is praying at a home for him to be set free. And the angel comes in the middle of the night, sets him free, and Peter's walking out in the street and suddenly realizes, oh my goodness, that was <laughs> that I am free. I thought I was dreaming. He, he goes to the house where they're all praying, where the disciples and the brothers are as well praying. He gets to the house, knocks on the door, Rhoda comes to the door, sees it's Peter, slams the door back in his face, runs in and says, Peter's outside there. He's free. And they're like, you're crazy, Rhoda. No, really, he's outside there. No, you're crazy, Rhoda. What had they been praying? They'd been praying for him to get free. That's a, there's a whole other story, right? And so they, find, they go back to the door and they open it up and, oh, it is you, Peter. Wow. And then he tells them the story how he's just been set free. Notice James is going. Paul comes to town. Paul meets with Cephas, that is Peter. Paul meets with him. And then he also meets with, with James, Jesus' brother. <clears throat> I think it's interesting how, G, how God tends to replace the people that that get taken down for one reason or another. Judas hangs himself. I think God had an apostle selected. No offense meant to Matthias, but I think that God had already selected the apostle Paul to fill his place. Now notice here, James. Peter, James, and John. James is beheaded. 
Peter's in jail. He wants to kill him, but he's waiting for the Passover to get over. And for, unfortunately, the angel frees him, so he doesn't get killed. And God replaces him with another James, the brother of Jesus. Isn't it unique how God takes care of our needs? How he puts people in those positions even when there is a great loss. Galatians 2 9 says, James, Cephas, and John, those esteemed as pillars, gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship when they recognized the grace given to me. They agreed that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. And God, I don't know if it's another situation or the same one. That other siren stopped fast. This one seems to be stopping quickly too. But God, somebody's in need. And I thank you that you're there. But Lord, what I pray is that those on scene will recognize your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. James, Cephas, and John, they're esteemed as pillars. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. Look at that. James, the brother of Jesus, has moved to this role as leader of the church now. That He's the one who's welcoming Paul and recognizing him. He demonstrates his wisdom in that there's this battle going on. Or, hey, what's the Gentiles? How can they become Christians? But they become Christians. In fact, not only did they become Christians, Holy Spirit filled them up to overflowing. They get baptized in the Spirit. And amazing things have happened. You know, oh no, now what are we going to do? And what, what does James say when they come to Jerusalem? Because there's this fight that takes place in Antioch, literally. And so Paul and Barnabas are sent to Jerusalem. You've got to figure this one out, church. And they go back to Jerusalem, who they meet with, James. And as the apostles are sitting there kind of discussing this, what's the best thing? Some of the Pharisees have been saying, oh man, they got to be circumcised. They got to go through all the rituals. And James stands up and it's automatically accepted, by the way. Did you notice it? James speaks with authority and he ends the struggle and he says, look, the Holy Spirit's filled them up. They've become believers. Who are we to control what God has done? Here, we just need to tell them not to drink blood, not to eat meat offered to idols, not to be sexually immoral. And the, and the church obeys and trusts him. What is it that we learn from James? Well, one of the things I think that we learn, and, and if you kind of do a summary, let's, and maybe let's do just like a little journey through the book of James, James teaches us to act on our beliefs. He and his brothers had their time of not believing Jesus, but now he directs Christians to live out our faith. The purpose of the book of James is to encourage Christian Jews not to revert to violence in response to injustice and poverty, but to stay focused on doing good, to stay holy, and to embrace the wisdom of heaven, not the wisdom of the world. And so he talks a lot about anger and the tongue. In fact, let's look at some of these verses. By the way, David Hume says, he draws the contrast between natural human ways of behaving. We are slow to hear, quick to speak, and quickly angry. And God's ways are different than that. Human anger cannot produce godly righteousness. It's the word of God that instructs us in right ways. But, is, but knowing is not enough, he writes. We must first, we must act on what we know to be right. James 1, 26 to 27, those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Watch out. If your tongues go on wild, either because of gossip or anger or something else, some abusive behavior, you're not being controlled by the Spirit. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Our behavior should affect the people around us and those who are in need, and we should not be polluting the world by our behavior or be polluted by the world. James 2.11, For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said, You shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you've become a lawbreaker. If you break one piece of the law, you've broken all of the law. 
Verse 14, what good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Now, James, there's this whole controversy. Well, Paul's saying it's justification by faith alone. James seems to be saying, oh, no, it's all by works. No, that's not what James is saying. James is saying because you're saved, it's going to be visible to the world. People are going to see your faith come out in your actions. You can't just say, I believe, and then have nothing to show that your belief is affecting who you are. So he goes on, verse 17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. If you say you're a Christian, but there's no evidence of it, you need to maybe question whether you really are a Christian. And by the way, I'm not saying that if you feel bad because you sinned, but if really, if there is no evidence at all, no visible appearance that I believe in Jesus Christ by my actions, then one needs to really say, do I believe in Jesus? Verse 26 says, the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Chapter 3, verse 18, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Wow. Uses some pretty strong words, doesn't he? For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Are you hearing the practical outcome of a person who knows Jesus Christ? James 4. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Isn't there something going on inside of you that's causing problems around you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask in wrong, with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think, Scripture says without reason, that he jealously longs for the Spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says God opposes the proud but shows excuse me, favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning, your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. See, James says, look, there's a practical way you ought to live if you know Jesus Christ. And James shows us how much Jesus can change us. Jesus was the older brother. Of course James looked up to him but he didn't believe he was the Messiah. <laughs> would you, come on, think about it. Would you really think of your own brother as the Messiah? It was years before my brother and sisters had respect for me. <laughs> and I'm still willy to them. <laughs> and sometimes we have those views of our siblings that is of a different time. And And James shows us how much Jesus can change us. James has the privilege of seeing the risen Christ. And the resurrection of Christ can not only change James, but it can change the people around us as well. Here's another thing that James teaches. He teaches that our actions are our witness. What we do is louder than what we say. It's our actions that witness to other people do we really believe in Jesus Christ. It's how we behave. In God's Not Dead Part 3, we'll let the light shine. Um, uh, There is a the, the pastor, and, and, and it, you know, it could be that these three God's Not Dead movies are really meant for Christians as much as they are meant for the unchurched. <laughs> and, and in it, this pastor is angry because his church building has burned down, been sabotaged by a young man, it turns out, that he knows. 
and he is angry and wants to fight him, wants to get back at him. And then the college, the university on whose campus the church sits, doesn't want the church to rebuild. So he's going to fight him. He gets his brother, who's got a bad relationship with God, gets him, who's an attorney, and gets him to come, and he's going to fight them. And then he has this friend who says, God does things differently. J James teaches us our actions are our witness. And like in the movie, they're invited, and this pastor in all of his pain is invited to shine the light. And we need to ask ourselves, will we shine the light of Jesus Christ by our actions so people can see Jesus in us? There's something else that I think that James wants to teach us this morning. Does anyone in your family think you're crazy because you believe in Jesus? <laughs> So if you have a family member that thinks you're crazy because you believe in Jesus, you're in good company with James. He thought the same thing as well, that Jesus was crazy. One of the things that we can learn from the life of James is that God continues to pursue our family. Even when we don't believe, <laughs> and, and we're kind of convinced they're messed up, they're never going to make it. I, I've often told people that, and Jesus actually says, when, when he sent out the t disciples two by two, he told them that they, when they came to a house that didn't welcome them, they were supposed to shake off the dust off their feet. And, I said, and I've told people, when you're witnessing to somebody and they're just constantly rejecting, you have to come to a point where you say, okay, I'm not going to tell you about Jesus ever again. I'm going to leave you in the fact that you don't want to know God. And that's a form of shaking the dust off their, off their feet. But I'm not convinced that you're supposed to do that with family. I, th I think with family, we're continually supposed to seek to show and live Jesus in front of them and trust that someday God is going to do something either through them seeing the difference in you. And notice that's really important, isn't it? We need to allow family to see the difference that Jesus does in us. So if somebody thinks you're crazy, pray that Jesus will meet them and let them see him and see him in your life and in your actions. See, you can have an influence on your family who thinks you're crazy. I have a video clip that I want to show you. It's from uh, God's Not Dead. <clears throat> and I, uh, in fact, why don't you just go ahead and do that now, Karen? <clears throat> Sometimes all it takes is a spark. The spark becomes a flame. And if that flame spreads, it transforms everything around it. All these years, this church has been here. Now it's the crime scene. What's going to happen when I find him? Put him away, I hope, for a long time. The church has brought nothing but controversy to school for years. This is a church on a state campus in the first place. This was my father's church, and it's not for sale. How do we actually know that our values are any more valid than anyone else's? God called me to fight. God calls you, you call me. His brother is a lawyer. Are you kidding me? What you're doing, it's against the law. Wasting our time here. We cannot respond to hate with more hate. Is it true? I just don't see God's mercy here. Especially not in Pastor Dave. He's human, Keaton. He's supposed to be a man of God. What am I doing wrong? You don't get to play in this. You did this! The world knows what the truth is against, but it's getting harder and harder to know what it's for. Seems like you're the one much being asked of this time. My God's not dead. He's surely alive. It's okay to be broken, Dave. It means God's still shaping you. That is painful and confusing as all of this is. It just might be exactly where God wants you right now. So that grace is our goal, which is fighting. How do you define truth exactly? I believe truth is a person. Don't forget, we are called to be a light in the darkness. Sometimes all it takes is a spark. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. Not been a good example. Your witness has been one that has 
not spoken for Jesus Christ. Not only did you not shine the light, you maybe did more harm than good. And Jesus can still change you and use you. Jesus can still shine a light through you. So don't give up on your family because Jesus isn't giving up on you. And learn how to shine a light so that the world can see Jesus Christ through you. Wow, James is an amazing man who leads a church all the way to his own death. And James will be one of the early martyrs. Before Jerusalem is destroyed, James will die for his faith in Jesus Christ. Will you live for Jesus and let the light shine through your actions, through your love, through your behavior, through your prayers? Because if God can came, change a James who thinks Jesus is crazy, he can change you and your family. Father God, do that for us. Maybe that some of us need to just confess, Lord, that um, we've doubted uh, whether our own family. Boy, I can remember a few years ago thinking, my brother-in-law Jack would never come to faith in you. And then to see what you did through his son right here on the mountain. Now, Andrew came to faith and six months later dad did too and I just uh, amazed at, Lord at what you do Lord help us in our doubts help us when we don't believe especially when it comes to family but help us to continue to live in a way that they can see you in us and forgive us when we mess up forgive us when we blow it God Forgive us when we make a poor presentation, when, when the story we tell by our actions is really harmful. Forgive us and help us to live more for you and to shine a light so that the world can see that Jesus lives and he lives in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus.